I probably should have started this from the beginning, but I used watercolors. These Prima marketing watercolors, Pastel Dreams is what I started out with. These are the colors here, and I just used a number four watercolor brush and just blotted on random kind of flowery shapes of various colors on my, this is six by eight and a half, maybe six by nine ish piece of watercolor paper. It's got a more of a textured side and it's got a smooth side. I do the smooth side because I'm going to draw on this. So I get my brush super, super wet and I just let the watercolors bleed and sometimes tap in colors in the middle. When it's completely dry, I grab one of my permanent markers. This one right here is a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. It's S. This one, it will not bleed with water. It's permanent black ink. The other really good one that I use when I'm lettering or doodling is the Stadler Pigment Liner Point Three. They're both permanent black markers and work really good. So I'm going to just double check my camera here. Maybe if I zoom in, you can really see better. Let me try this and see how it works. So I am going to use this one, my Stadler pen, and I basically just doodle around these shapes and come up with various flowers. <clears throat> I'm not sure what the lighting is going to be look like here. I do my watercolor and let it dry really good before I start this. Put it down here closer in the middle. So Make sure that you see what I'm doing, because I don't think with the camera zoomed in, it shows the entire piece. So I'll try to keep it in the middle. I doodle around and then I kind of outline again just a tiny bit, because I just love that extra dimension when I'm doodling. The watercolor doesn't have to be exactly in the flowers. It's just a fun way to add color to some of the doodling. And you'll probably notice it's just how I am, but for some reason, when I'm drawing, creating, whatever, I talk slow. <laughs> it's like I can't talk and concentrate on drawing at the same time. I mess up big time if I try to have like a normal conversation so sometimes you'll notice that I kind of have this slow talking mode when I'm drawing my brain it's funny because I have an analytical brain one of my best subjects is math and science which is one of the reasons I was in accounting for many years and then computer programming. I wrote computer code for a career before I retired and surprisingly a lot of analytical thinkers are also artists because creating clear, helps clear the brain that you sometimes can't turn off when you're an analytical thinker. So let's see, how am I going to do this? And I just kind of want to go with the flow on this one. Doodling for me is seriously is just quick. Don't overthink it. I just quickly, fluidly draw trace around shapes. Nature is so unique and individual and so should be your, so your, your art should be too. 
one of the things you've probably heard me say before and you'll probably hear me say it numerous times is your art is your own work. It's really hard not to compare and I've learned over the years and I try to tell everyone don't compare your art to my art. I show you how I do it and you may think, oh my gosh, that looks so easy, I can do it. And to me, it is easy, I just do it. I've been doodling and drawing for forever. But you may have a really hard time. Your mind just may have a hard time doing it. Our brains are different and that's okay. So you just do it to the best of your ability and see what you come up with. Not everyone's an artist, but don't try to be perfect because it's impossible. I can guarantee you that you are like your worst critic. And don't compare. I can't emphasize that enough and you'll probably hear me say it 10 times on this video. Let's see, maybe I'll add some more fun little hoops, circles, whatever you want to call them. Half moons across the center. Just for a little bit of something different. See, to me that looks so plain, but when I add these extra little hoops, it just adds a little bit of extra of dimension on it. Have you ever in the summertime went out to your flower garden and examined a flower? I mean, really examine it, pull it off the stem and just look how beautiful God's creations are and the details. It, I mean, it's seriously, it is so amazing. It's just amazing. So this is just going to be a fun, big, little, yellow, big, little. That makes sense, doesn't it? This can be a fun, larger flower than I was, have been making. <clears throat> We're having a winter in Idaho, and this morning we had a lot of snow, and the roads were a little slick, not bad. It was 26 degrees or something when I went out first thing this morning to run some errands and I it's really common Idaho is a desert but we do have winter we don't we no longer have the winters we used to have but we still do get winter and I always get a really runny nose if you live in Idaho, my ENT, because I have a I have a problem with dry, the really dry desert air, and my ENT said that because the air is so dry, our bodies try to overcompensate and keep our noses and nasal passages moist. So ooh, some people don't like that word. Um, so we get runny noses so if you come to idaho you'll probably notice that a lot of people have runny noses and or a lot of people pick their noses which is kind of funny because when you have a runny nose and it's dry what do you get big old crusty boogers how did i get on that subject oh today i'm kind of stuffy so you might hear me kind of stuffy my little stuffy nose a little bit I sniff a little. Anyway, that's kind of a funny little silly fact about uh, Idaho and our dry desert air. We just don't have the humidity like a lot of our neighboring states do along the coast or Midwest, even though we do have reservoirs. Most of all of our reservoirs in Idaho are man-made. They're man-made reservoirs. 
<clears throat> so that we had dams to irrigate the farmland. But we don't get a lot of rain in the summer and we dry and lots of sagebrush. But we have a lot of pretty flowers in our flower gardens and because it's winter I feel like making flowers. My lighting's not very good at the moment. It's kind of getting dark outside again. Maybe another storm's coming in. So see what I'm doing? I'm just making random silly little flowers. I added a little green blobs, which can be leaves. And you don't have to outline everything. Notice this big round circular shape I made into more of a daisy type flower. This is like a pink shade with a little bit of lavender blobbed in the middle. I'm trying to do this quick so it's a fairly quick video. Because if you're like me, I don't like to watch very long videos. It's okay if I'm learning <coughs> new stuff. So today's New Year's Eve. My handyman is working. He has fiscal year end inventory and he has to work tomorrow too. So I'm just kind of cleaning up stuff around the house, purging, put my Christmas stuff up the last couple days, ran errands, did some grocery shopping, and then I came home and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna I'm just gonna pull out my watercolors and have some fun. I haven't done it for a long time. I haven't really done a lot of doodling because I've been focusing on painting ornaments for my grandkids and doing my December list challenge with lettering. And so I haven't really doodled and painted. <clears throat> this kind of, I tried to make it kind of look like a tulip. But it doesn't really look like a tulip, does it? I'm not good at drawing tulips, but you know what? Tulips are one of my favorite flowers. I love tulips. I love, I love so many flowers. I, my handyman buys me flowers on special occasions. But the last couple of years, I, when I go to Albertsons or Ridley's, I have been buying myself flowers just because they're kind of cool to do. I love having a little bouquet of flowers in my house. It just cheers it up, especially since we've been kind of stuck in the house during the bad weather. Even though it's COVID, luckily we're the outdoorsy type. So this summer we were able to take the boat out a lot and go fishing because being out on the lake or the river I should say or the reservoir is a good way to social distance and have fun. Keep some fish for the freezer. Next year or yeah next year because tomorrow's next year I want to uh, catch more trout and canned them because canned trout kind of tastes like canned salmon. So that's kind of one of my goals for 2021 is to preserve more food and preserve other than just freeze fish in my pressure cooker. Are you a doodler? Are you a watercolor? Have you ever combined both? So 
So you might wonder what I do with these when I'm done. That's a good question. I've been putting these in my journals as like divider pages. Last year I made a couple um, journals and they were disc journals. So I punched them and made little dividers because watercolor paper is pretty heavy. <clears throat> the other thing I always like to do, because to me it just kind of finishes, makes it a little fin more finished, is add little dots and circles. I hope you can see this again. My camera's above my head. And I zoomed in so you guys could see better what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep this like right here in the middle. Yeah, I should stand up and look to see what I'm seeing. Oh yeah, you guys can see this. This flower looks kind of rosy. It's a rosy rose with yellow center. A little bit of a yellow center. I'm going to kind of... I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to make it look kind of rosy-ish. What do you think? Ruining it? <clears throat> so there's a little rose bud. Not bad. Obviously not a rose bud. It's a rose in bloom. Again, I slowly go back over all of this. Maybe in a week or two, I'll make another video where I just start from scratch and show you how I just blob the paint on randomly and let it bleed together. But you don't want to make it muddy. So you have to kind of think of the process as you go along so that it's not muddy because it's really easy to get muddy watercolors. Leaf off this. See how I've got green on all the edges, how it bleeds out? That's one of the things that I just love about doing this is I don't necessarily follow the color. Make this leaf a little random. Here's another leaf over here. Just let the pen flow. Let your brain relax. It's so calming. One of the reasons I love to sketch and draw is, again, like I said, it like clears my brain. It's so relaxing to doodle. Some people think when you're a doodler, doodler, you're not paying attention. And it's actually really common if you work with geeks like me to be in a meeting that you're trying to plan and make like project planning meetings and the brain is thinking a mile a minute. It's actually really common it was really common for me to like doodle on my notepad because doodling not only calms the brain but it also helps you concentrate for some reason people that doodle concentrate better than people that don't it doesn't make sense but it's true research it 
I bet I'm right. I bet I'm right that people that doodle have better concentration than people that don't. Because it's like the brain is already focused. And so if you're really listening intently on what's going around you, I, I believe it's probably more hyper-focused. You didn't think you'd be getting life lessons <laughs> watching me doodle, did you? I'm full of all kinds of life lessons for you. If you want to know, I'm not sure if they'll help, but they help me, and that's important. So if they can help you understand me and my doodly brain, and my artistic brain, then that's good. When I worked as a computer programmer, I mean, there's different kinds of geeks, but most of the um, geek boys that I worked with all had some kind of artistic projects. And arti artistic projects isn't necessarily drawing or painting. It can be working in the garage, rebuilding an engine because you, you're putting it together. You have to logically think how the puzzle goes together and that's creating something. <clears throat> you might remodel things, build furniture, quilt, paint, be a paper crafter and make cards and fun stuff. Flip houses. <laughs> I mean, I knew, had friends that did numerous things like that and it's just what we do when we have busy minds and one of the things that I believe in is that we are all creators you just have to find out what kind of creations are best for you. You could be a photographer, you could be write books, you can be a doodler, you can be a beautiful pen hand letter with brush markers, which I love and I just have a hard time getting the hang of it because I like these type of pens. So it's, I've had a really hard time trying to learn brush lettering. You would think I would be good at it because if you follow my Instagram, you can see all my lettering. It's different, it's just totally different and I just have a hard time with brush lettering of all things. I'd love to learn it. I actually like the bounce lettering, it's one of my favorites. It's so fun. It's fun to view, I should say. Anyway, what do you think? What do you think of my fun little watercolor project that I turned into like a doodle? I'll just punch, get my punch out, determine which journal I want to put this in. And it'll be a little piece of art or divider page in my note journal or scriptural journal or fussy cutting journal or monthly planner or something. Actually, when I'm doodling too, I turn the page around as you can see to get a better angle. So see, that was a pretty quick little art project. So I'll figure out something else. But you can watch the whole process when I'm watercoloring. And this, this flower right here needs something else. It looks kind of funny. With all its little...
this just needs some something coming out the middle here Okay, that may be the end of it. What do you think? Time for you to get creative and doodle. It's so much fun and enjoyable and relaxing. Thanks for joining.